Hey, good evening. It is Sunday, August the 21st, 2022. And we are here tonight with me and Mr. Steve Rizzo for another episode of Conversations with Bob. So stay with us. And Steve Rizzo will be joining us here in a moment. And oh, by the way, share this out. Go ahead and share it out. Click that little share button and share it out. See you guys in a minute. What's going on, Mr. Steve Rizzo? What up with you? Um, busier than a one-armed paper hanger. I've oftentimes wondered, though, if I ever met a one-armed paper hanger, would they be offended by me saying I'm busier than a one-armed paper hanger? I don't know. Just... I never even heard that saying before. Really? No. How about a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest? Oh, but this is going to be a great episode, isn't it? (laughs) Wow. And that's a wrap. (laughs) Mr. Ben Gay is is here. And he's laughing because he thinks I'm funny. Unlike you, you don't think I'm funny. Ben, Ben, thank you for laughing at my jokes. We have Robert Brooker from Toronto, A. Greetings, Ken and Steve. So, hey, tonight we're talking about, what are we talking about tonight? We are talking about uh, the power of choice, and we're talking about the power of intention. Attention, Mm. intention, and how choice and all of this is all intermingled somehow. Actually, those three things are keys uh, to living a successful and happy life. It's uh, the best way to manifest what it is that you're doing with your world and your life is uh, through the power of choice and um, using that to create an, uh, an intense intention on the things that you want in life. Yeah. So let's talk about choice. Maybe we should start with choice. Hey, Missy, how you doing? So talk about... Look, Lori intended to share this, so she did. Thank you, Lori. Lori is awesome. Yeah, she is. Tom Tom Ginn is awesome. Tom, good to see you. Megan Watson, she's awesome. I mean, she's really, really awesome. So, So let's talk about choice, man. Like, you have a chapter in your book, which is ironically called Conversations with Bob. (laughs) <laughs> and, th- and thank you for your reviews uh that's bob speaking through me actually <laughs> yeah and uh there's a whole chapter in this book actually it's i think it's chapter three in the book where he talks about uh well, i have yeah. it. i have the book let's just go to chapter three I we don't we- need to speculate we don't need no stinking speculation no it's chapter four the choices you make as a matter of fact, in that one page, the opening page by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, she says, I believe that we are solely responsible for our choices and we have to accept the consequences of every deed, word, and thought throughout our entire lifetime. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting and it's scary, but there's another side of that. That doesn't mean if you look back at your life, first of all, you have to admit where you screwed up and that you did it and you own it. That's key. But then you have the power to make other choices and how to make amends with that, whether it's somebody that you hurt or whether you just screwed yourself by bad business decisions, financial disaster, whatever it was, stop the blame game because that's a choice too. And that's a choice that's going to make a challenging situation worse than what it has to be. You have to own it. And once you own it, you start becoming empowered. And from there, you could say, okay, I really messed this up. What can I do 
to turn this around? These are called power questions. Who, yep. do, who can I go to that can help me? I did. I screwed up. I have to learn to forgive myself for this. Is Otherwise, I'm going to carry this with every other decision that I make. And then you start from there and you learn from it. And, and you move forward with that. By the way, we do have Queen Victoria on here with us. <laughs> wow. Are you okay? I, do you need some gas X? <laughs> what the heck? What was that? It was oh. it. It was this. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, okay. <laughs> That's, that's what I, I got a built-in kazoo. <laughs> oh, you know what, man? You ain't seen nothing yet. Every I, I, you were crap. Speaking of choices, can you choose to not do that anymore? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's so funny. Oh. So Victoria is here. Stephen, and we'll get to that. Stephen wants to know who in the H-E double hockey sticks is Bob. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, Bruce is here. Oh, we got Craig Doeswald in the house. What's happening? Oh, my God. I love Craig. He's a great guy. Oh, my God. He's the best. It's a shame he doesn't know how to spell boys. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Well, we're working on that. Debbie. Debbie is here. Um. And I mean, we don't even need to announce anybody else. We have Debbie here. So, so um, look, Megan says built in building kazoo sounds like our politicians. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. Uh, wow. We don't want to go there. So, um, so Steve, you're saying then that we have the power to choose and I do think that it's important that we, you know, Jack Canfield's book, um, The Success Principles, the very first principle, I think there's 67 principles in the book, if I if memory serves me correctly. Um, and the very first one is take 100% responsibility mm-hmm. for every single outcome in your life. Yep. Which is and, yeah, which is a choice. Yes which is a choice. It's a choice. You get to choose your reaction. Life isn't about what happens. It's, it's how you choose to react or respond to what, to what happens. Right. Yeah. So we have a special little surprise for everybody tonight. Um, a little video clip that I think I would like to play. Um, everybody watching, this is a really special little surprise, by the way, um, drop a one. If you would like to see this little video clip, um, about choice, drop a one in the comments, just the number one, drop a one. If you would like to see this really cool little video clip, Jackson crisp is in the house. That dude right there is like seven foot tall, man. I'm not kidding. He's no, he's like six Jackson. How six, eight, six, nine. I just had him on the show the other day. He's, he's an unbelievable, unbelievable dude. NFL, NFL. Um, so let's show, we got a bunch of ones, man. So let's, let's just go ahead and show this clip. Um, and hang on, let me get that. Okay, here we go. You ready? You guys ready? Here we go. Steve, you ready for this? Yes, Ken. Wow. We're just playing already. What's wrong with you? Wow. <laughs> here we go. Gee, I get no respect. <laughs> we interrupt this segment to bring you a special news bulletin. Choice. The key is choice. You have options. You need not spend your life wallowing in failure, ignorance, grief, poverty, shame, and self-pity. If this is true, then why have so many among us apparently elected to live in that manner? The answer is obvious. Those who live in unhappy failure have never exercised their options for a better way of life because they have never been aware that they had any choices.
Those words are from The Choice, a book written by Og Mandino. If you haven't read it, I highly suggest that you do. And if you have read it, read it again. Your entire life is based on the choices that you make. And for every choice that you make, whether it's made consciously or unconsciously, there is always a consequence. In fact, think about this. Where you are at this point in your life is based on the choices that you made at some point in the past. Those choices are the key factors that determine the quality of life that you have right now. Now you can choose to believe that you are helpless and at the mercy of life's unpleasant twists of fate and misfortunes. You could choose to believe that some people are lucky and some are destined to a life of misery and despair. Now, if that's what you believe, then that will be your reality. On the other hand, you can choose to believe that you have a choice in all of your affairs, that you may not be able to control what happens to you, but you can always choose how to think about what happens to you and always choose the state of mind that you need to be in regardless of what's happening around you or to you. Your life isn't predestined for greatness. Your life is not predestined for failure. It's up to you to create a belief system that allows you to see your life from an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Only you can choose to shift your thoughts and words to turn challenging times into opportunities. Trust me when I say that talent and ability are not the only factors that determine a successful and happy life. For your sake, especially during tough times, get into the habit of choosing positive thoughts and, and speaking empowering words. Focus on hope, gratitude, and seeing the good during adverse times. If you do, you will discover a brighter day, regardless of what's happening to you or around you. The choice is yours, my friends. It always has been, and it always will be. And that, that's the word, according to Bob. There you have it, the word according to Bob. Mm. So I, I want to point out a couple of things real fast. Oh, seven foot, is he single? <laughs> she's talking about Jackson. Well, well, I know she's not talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I met Steve, I said, dude, stand up. And he's like, I am standing. I said, no, come on, seriously, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I said, follow the other big road. <laughs> so, so, um, so Jackson met, you met Jackson. At yes, I did. He's a great guy. Yeah. Great He's guy. Super, super guy. Megan also loves Og Mandino. He's amazing. I don't think Og was seven foot tall, though. No. Just for the record. Did you know Og? Uh, I met him once at a did National you? Speakers Association. That's awesome. So that was a great video brought to us by the one and only Steve Rizzo. You know, I had I had such a blast doing those videos. I did 16 or 17 of them, all with, you know, different messages. And uh, it was just so much fun putting on that, uh, that Hugh Hefner robe and sitting in front of my library like that and just... <laughs> do you still have that robe? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, I do. Should I do one of our shows with it? I think you should. Okay, well, should should I wear anything underneath it or no? We'll just let people's imaginations go with that. Jeez. That's totally up to you, I guess. I, I you know, I'm, not, I'm just trying to throw you off your game. I'm and not, you know what? I can't do that with you. I can't. No, it's impossible. No, you can't. You cannot. You can't do it. So, um, Megan said she thought that was funny. Well, she's the one on here hitting on seven foot tall men. Like, that's quite funny. We introduce you to Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so, Megan. to answer Stevens, Stephen had the question of who in the heck is Bob? Let's tell him who Bob is. Who's Bob? Uh, Bob is actually God. Uh, Bob is of your higher nature. Everyone has an inner Bob. Your inner Bob has all the uh, answers to your questions and solutions to your problems. You just have to learn how to connect and communicate with him. And this book, Conversations with Bob, 
shows you how, Stephen. I hope that answers your your uh, your question. Um, it's a book that I wrote. It took me seven years to write at a low point in my life, and um, it's become uh, my mission for the rest of my life from this point on. And Ken was gracious enough to uh, uh, help me get the message out and spread the word. And um, uh, Debbie, Debbie's going to be helping me along the way uh, in the near future. And uh, I have been blessed with so many of you people, thanks to you, Ken, who introduced me to everyone. Um, you're all on board and so many of you, and this is what blows me away with all of you, is that you're so eager to learn and uh, you make it a pleasurable experience just by your comments and your heartfelt uh, words. And I, I thank you all for it. It's uh, We're all on to something here. We can all be that spark that could ignite change in people's lives. And that's what it's all about. I think we need this type of stuff more than any other time in the history of this planet because a lot of people are going haywire. So um, I'll leave it at that. By the way, I, I get notified. I'm looking at my phone right now. It tells me who shared our video out. I asked politely for you all to share it. And so far, Lori Zapata is the only one that shared it. So what's up with that? That's a wrap. We're done doing this. If you can't even share our show, then we're done. Bye. <laughs> hey, talk about <laughs> attitude. <laughs> He, he gets no respect. <laughs> Had a bad day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Megan, God. thank you, Megan. She's so sweet. So um, Nick just shared it too. What's up? See, okay, intention. Let's talk about intention. People don't set intention, or if they do, it's a half-hearted intention, and they're not willing to put it all on the line. And, and me personally, I don't, <laughs> Darlene, Darlene said, I just got here. I was thinking about sharing it now. No way. No um, excuse, Darlene. Yeah. <laughs> and stop whining. <laughs> <laughs> but, but most people set half-hearted intentions like, okay, I intend to um, manifest $1 million unless it gets too hard. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna manifest ten thousand dollars unless it gets too hard, and then I'm gonna manifest a thousand dollars. And they just adjust their sales. I intend on getting everybody watching to share this out. That's my intention, and I believe that it's worthy of sharing. I believe the content that we are sharing with the world is worthy for the rest of the world to hear it. And the only way we get it to the rest of the world is by number one, setting the intention to have everybody share it. Number two, asking over and over and over and over and over and over and over until everybody does it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you, you said something really important. And the thing is, uh, people don't know about intention or how to use it because a lot of people don't know the key factor towards intention. The key factor towards intention is imagination. Imagination. Albert Einstein said, knowledge uh, is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Yes. Does, it encircles the world. So when you have an intention for something, if you could imagine it in your mind, I want everyone to get this, as if you already have it, not just one day, throughout the day, every day, get psyched about it, spend some time by yourself, visualize what it is that you want, whatever it is that you desire, whether it's a new career, whether it's to write a book or whether it's to obtain money, get a new car, a new house, whatever it is, yeah. you visualize it. And as you're visualizing, here's the big key, feel it as if you already have it. What would you feel like if you already had that thing that you desire? Yeah. And then you take every step in that direction, it's the feeling that answers the intention. It's the feeling. As a matter of fact, when you're praying for something, feeling is the prayer. Yes. You you can't just go in and say yes and then no, no, I'd like to have this and I you know maybe you, you don't go in prayer with a droopy dog attitude. Remember remember the cartoon? Well, Bob, can you please pretty please do me a favor? Maybe you know I I like you, you have a little bit more money for the weekend and perhaps you know I can get a job that someday everybody would respect me. Could you do that, Bobby boy, please? Oh my God! You don't That's do true. that. You, you gotta feel it. Gotta feel it. Yeah. You gotta feel it. 
you know, I, I, um, and by the way, so see, I was getting ready to say, cause Jackson said, I'm still trying to figure out how to share it. Um, so I was going to say like, look, Megan is the queen of sharing. She's very good at this stuff and she needs a seven foot man. You guys are like the perfect couple. I'm just saying, um, <laughs> I'm trying to make a connection here. I feel like Who's the guy from the love connection? Or what? all of a sudden, it's the dating game. The dating game. <laughs> yeah. oh that was so funny. Oh my god, that's such a funny. Um, so, you know, intention though. Intention is because um, we when we were talking about this earlier today, you and I on the phone, I was like, man, we really have to. Um, Scott Ricard is in the house. Thank you for sharing, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. So, so, you know, um, I think that people don't set, and how do I say this? I think the biggest challenge people have is not, maybe not setting, um, goals, but having an intention. Like if you ask most people, what do you want to do while you're here on this planet? Cause you do have an expiration date, you, right? You're going to die. Nobody gets out of here alive. We talked about that today too. Right? So yeah. if, if, if you are here for a limited amount of time, let's say that, you know, I don't even know what the average age uh, uh, is anymore, but let's say you're, 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 you're here for 85 or 90 or whatever years. What in from the, the the time you were born until the your expiration date, the day that you cross over and you go meet Bob, what do you want to do while you're here? What do you want to be remembered for? And the number one answer is always, well, I want to help people or I want to change the world. Right? That's 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 cute, but that's not an intention that's not literally like how what what's your why starting with that like the simon cynic thing right what is your why where where do you begin and 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 how do you set the intention to help people like you want to help people what are you going to do to help people go yep. pass out hundred dollar bills that'll help people is that yep. what you mean what is your intention yep Another, another very powerful aspect of intention, Ken, and, and um, years ago, I was asked to do a success show with Donnie Deutsch. I don't know if you remember him. He was on MSNBC. Oh, yeah. and, and they chose, they, they Googled uh, people who are successful and, and uh, was voted least likely to succeed. So on the panel was me, Aaron Brockovich, and Paul Stanley of KISS. Okay? Wow. But Paul Stanley said something. You want to talk about intention that just... It was so cool to hear. He said when he was in junior high school, a teacher took him after class and said, Paul, you're so gifted and you're so talented. You've got to try a little harder. I know you can do better than this. And he goes, he looked at her and he said, well, you know, I appreciate you saying that. He goes, but, you know, I don't need any of this. I already know what I'm going to do with my life. So she said, well, what is that? She goes, he goes, I'm going to be a rock and roll star. And she goes, Paul, please be realistic. She goes, everybody in this school, every student in this school wants to be a rock star. And he looked at her and said, see, well, that's the difference. She goes, what, what's the difference? And he goes, they want to be. And he looked at her straight in the face and said, I'm going to be. Oh. That's the power of intention. That's intention. And he took that with him. That, and if you, if you talk to any successful person, even ones that screw up, there even comes a point with people who screw up, maybe half their lives, like, you know, the mistakes that I've made. There comes a point where you just, if you're lucky enough, you hit something and you just go enough. Even saying that enough is the power of intention. It's the opening to the door of intention. And then when you say enough, you'd say, I am, I'm, I'm better than this. What do I have to do to turn around? You move forward and you take every step in that direction. Wow. Wow. Did you know that Craig Doswald is friends with Paul Stanley? I, I heard that. So I think it was a conversation that we had with, uh, back in Dallas. I, I heard that. I heard that. 
And you were what was this you were on with it the, was it was the it was the Donnie Deutsch success show. It was on NBC. On, it was C, pretty popular. CNBC. CNBC. It was many years ago. Or was CNBC, it, yes. Was it, yeah, CNBC. I remember that. You were on that? Yes, I was on that. They Googled me and uh uh, uh, Paul Stanley was on. Uh, he was on a video. He he couldn't make it live, but I was sitting next to Eric Eric uh, Aaron Brockovich, and um, wow. all, all all three of us had that aha moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Aaron Aaron said it in similar words, but Paul said it with such conviction, and and he was only in junior high when he said it, which is what what captivated me. You know, uh, they they want to be. I'm going to be. You and, you know the end I of that story. <laughs> I, I wish I wish that I wish Glenn Morshauer was on here with us right now because Glenn tells a he you know he teaches actors he and he's obviously a very well-known actor um and one of the things that he says to um he tells this story about he was I forget where he was he was somewhere I think in Los Angeles he was um, speaking to a group of actors and actresses, um, and they, 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 he said, I want to see a show of hands. How many of you came to L.A. from somewhere else to pursue a career in acting? And every hand went up in the audience. He goes, <laughs> the difference between you and me is I didn't come to Los Angeles to pursue a career in acting. I came to Los Angeles to have a career in acting. Yep. Yep. And, and too many people are pursuing, they don't set an intention and then sink their teeth into that intention and that goal, that, that whatever you want to call yep. it intention yep. with like a, 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 a freaking dog on, on uh, like a, a, what's the pit bull like get a pit bull grip on whatever it is that you're trying to create what's your intention and don't let go of it don't and let it, go and intention is a choice it it's is choice. you don't pursue your dream you live your dream and the first way to live your dream is to visualize it as i said and i know this might sound repetitious but i want everyone to get this because i believe repetition is the key to learning okay so you visualize it in your head and think of what it would feel like if you had this already and you take every step forward. And every now and then you have to remind yourself every day throughout the day, you know, here's another step closer. And yes, you're going to be confronted with challenges, but it's the intention that keeps you moving in spite of what life is throwing at you. I mean, you look at any invention, look at the Wright brothers, look at, look at you know, uh, uh, Alexander Graham Bale, look at Thomas Edison. Their intention was like, it was in unfolding. It was just straightforward. Did they have challenges? Did they fail over and over again? Yes. But they kept the power of intention, that dream, that imagination in their mind saying, we can do this. I know we can do this. We made a mistake. Okay. So what do you do with a mistake? You Mistakes are do-overs. You do it over and, and see what it is that you did wrong. Try and get it right. And you get closer and closer until finally you're there. That's you know, intention. It is, man. It is. Steve Jobs. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs would have set an intention to create and then he was like, yeah, man, this is, eh, this is too hard. And, 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 you know, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like this anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about this and gave up. What, what would we, be communicating with yeah yep yeah it's there's so many examples right there's so many examples well it's also the key to failure people lose their intention they mm -hmm. then life sometimes beats the hell out of people yeah and um they don't know that uh once that the hell is beaten out of them that they can they can bounce back and some people don't want to some people just say that's it you know i i give up and and you see that, that there are more of those, unfortunately, than people who succeed. So true. The power of intention and attention. And the, again, we were talking about choice early. Those are all choices. It's all choices. And uh, if you, again, if you study any successful person, it's, it's the intention that got them to where they wanted to go.
And so some people true. overcame in, insurmountable odds to get to where they where they had to go. Yeah, so true, man. So true. Wow. I'm trying to look through some of the um, comments here. So, so when you, let me ask you a question, cause you've, you know, you worked with Rodney Dangerfield. You obviously you were friends with him and Eddie Murphy and all the, the, the greats and the legends, Jerry Seinfeld. And, and, was there ever a point in your life, in your career, where you you were like, "This is what I intended. I, I intended to be friends with Rodney Dangerfield." Did you ever set that intention, or did did do you feel like some of that happened by happenstance? As I, as I look back now, I could see that I intended it, but okay. when it happened then, uh, uh. I really wasn't that kind of aware of it, but it's only when I, man, I got to tell you, Ken, when I left the stand up business, and I think most people know, I told a lot of people I left because I was sabotaging um, so many great opportunities that were coming my way because I didn't believe in myself. That yeah. power of intention uh, sort of like got foiled because the business beat the crap out of me. Right. But, um, when I started going on this self-help quest to better myself and I read every self-help book you could think of, and I went to motivational seminars and spiritual retreats and uh, Tony Robbins seminars. And I just, I became empowered and that's when the power of intention started coming in, but I can call it magical uh, because magical things happened. I mean, happened. You know, I, I give, the first time I realized it was when I wrote my first book, Becoming a Humor Being. I never wrote a book before. I never, ever thought I would ever write a book. But something inside me said, hey, Steve, you can do this. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm halfway, I'm, I'm finished with the book and I sent it to a friend of mine. And one of them said, one of them said, Steve, this is really, really good. But I think this book could really use a story of someone who was pretty famous and how they overcame a major challenge in life because of their sense of humor. So, you know, the book is called Becoming a Humor Being, The Power to Choose Another Way. So I put the power of intention to play. And every day I would just visualize someone who was famous in some way, somehow, would help me with this book somehow. And I just put it out there. I prayed about it. And I didn't think it was going to happen. I just knew somehow, somewhere along the way. And it was about three days later, two days later, I was on a flight from uh, LaGuardia Airport to Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm sitting in first class and I'm sitting next to this very attractive woman. And she has her sunglasses on. But I could still say I'm saying I know her from somewhere. <laughs> and and <clears throat> all of a sudden she puts her boarding pass on the side of the seat here. And I look and it's Naomi Judd. Okay. Wow. So I was, I looked at her and she said, how are you this morning? And I said, I'm doing fine. She said, I'm Naomi. I said, I know who you are. I said, I'm Steve Rizzo. And we started talking. Okay. I'm going to make a long story short. Did she here. know who you were? Uh, no, oh. no, no. I, I, I had not done any, uh, you know, well, yes, I did. I did a Showtime special, love, but she didn't yeah. know who I was. So um, we just started talking. And uh, I, I told her what I did. I said, I'm a motivational personal development speaker. And she goes, oh, that's wonderful. She goes, and I speak to people too on, on love and, and joy. So I thought it was great. She said that. And I said, can I ask you a question? And she said, yeah. I said, I'm writing a book. And uh, she told me her story, how she was diagnosed with hepatitis C when she was a nurse. And she pricked her finger with a needle. And it was years later that it consumed her and wow. doctors gave her six months to live six months and uh she told me how she overcame it and i said Naomi, would could would you say that your sense of humor uh was crucial in helping you to survive this ordeal and she started crying and she had tears she trying to hold her back she grabbed my hand and she said oh my god Stephen, if it wasn't for my sense of humor i wouldn't be here today and I looked at her and I said, 
I'm writing this book. Would you mind if we could somehow get together and talk about this? She gave me her home phone number. She told me, call me anytime next week and we will have conversation after conversation until you have what you want. And that whole last chapter of that book, that whole last chapter of that book was um, um, about how your humor being is connected to the power of love, which is what she talked about. And Dude. That's, what, that's the power of intention. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi Judd. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I've sat in first class a lot. And I've never sat next to somebody famous. It's always but some you're not me. That, like <laughs> you're not me. <laughs> I know. You not I got the power. It was like the last time was some some dude that that was like I, I anyway, <clears throat> I, it doesn't even matter, but like that is freaking amazing. Yeah. So so here let me so when you said you put that you put that intention out there, right? And you yeah. started visualize. Did you have the thought back then? Did you have the thought, I'm going to set this intention? Were you intentional about setting the intention? Yes. yes. And, and not only that, and prayer is a huge part of intention, folks. Huge. 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 So you got to go into prayer with the mindset before prayer, during prayer, and after prayer. Your thought process, which creates your belief. Too many people have great intention going into prayer, but then when the prayer is over and a week goes by, they go, oh, this is bullshit again. I knew this was going to happen. It never right. happened. I don't even know why I wasted my time, you know? And wh what do you expect? And in the book, Bob says that to Bernie over and over again. Wow. We, we are the creators of our success and happiness. And the key to creating is the power of intention. The power of intention. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it can be done. It can be done. I proved it. I I have other stories like that. Can I? I'm, it's it's just amazing. I, it's it's funny how life is. It, it really is. You know, back when, and I think I've told this story before, but I you know watched the movie The Secret long time ago. Oh, I, I've seen that movie. I don't even know how many times. And I remember John Asaraf talking about creating the vision board and, and I decided to create a vision board. <clears throat> I still have it. It's right down here on the floor. I need to hang that up. But anyway, I digress. So I created this vision board and I took, uh, I put on the, uh, the, I made a, put myself on the cover of fortune magazine and, and I put my logo in there and all this. And, and I put, you know, who is this guy, Ken Walls? America's wealthiest are reaching out to him for advice. And, and I never really thought a lot about it. I saw it every day because it, it hung on my wall. <clears throat> never really put a lot of thought in it. And back then, I was fresh out of a divorce, couldn't finance a bologna sandwich. Um, was Things were not good, really not good in my life. And I have a year ago, I had Mark Victor Hansen reach out to me and ask if I would, if I would let Mitzi Perdue, who wrote his biography, Relentless, and ask if, if I would do, if, if I would tell my story to be in his book, his, his, the number one best-selling author of all time. 500 million books that him and Jack sold. And I'm in his freaking book. I have my own chapter in Mark Victor Hansen's biography, chapter 27. And I think about all of the things that I, the intentions I set years ago, years and years ago. And, and, and they come to life right there. And I, I, I it's it, the power of, of it is unbelievable like it, it people don't understand that they give up and and we talked a little bit about that and you know when when i say give up i don't mean you give up on life and you go jump off a bridge you just go ah this isn't working i'm not doing this anymore and and they go a different direction well I, a, that's a good point because you have to 
another thing about intention is, is this thing that you want your heart's desire? Right. That's key. You know, people just try different things just to, you know, it's not really there. It's not something that they're like juiced about. You know, it's not a part of who they are. Right. And 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 and, and your soul knows this. You, you can't you can't fool your soul, your spirit, who you really are, your authentic self. That's the yes. word. Those are the words. You can't fool your authentic self. Your authentic self knows exactly what you want. And, and and if you're going for it, it's just like when I made that decision, the power of intention from leaving stand up at the pinnacle of my career when I finally got my shit together, finally got it together by going to all those seminars and in spiritual retreats. And I, my belief system was like, you know, I could have conquered the world. I I had a calling to follow my heart and that following of my heart became stronger with every self-help book that I read. I started realizing this is my calling. And then I realized another thing. If it wasn't for my pitfall to sabotage all these breaks in my comedy career, I never would have been able to turn my life around to become empowered to realize what I was put on this planet to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely does. So that's all part of intention too. It can take you to a, a totally different venue, a, a totally different way. Wow. I, I think that that uh, I love what you just said. You cannot fool your soul. No, you can't. That's it's amazing. Yep. Darlene says, I have a vision board. And on the other side are yellow posty notes with inspirational names of people. Ken, you are one of several people. Wow, Darlene, that's so nice. Thank you. I do want to point out that my brother, Brian Hess, is on here. <clears throat> Brian, man, you want to talk about somebody in intentional. I don't know if Brian's still on here or not, but but this guy here, I, I met him in person at his house um, four years ago actually almost exactly four years ago and here he is he's on here and this guy was just starting his company and he got really intentional he's doing i mean now he's doing tens of millions of dollars and i i don't know what the numbers are but they're huge and 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 it's amazing to see the progression that he's made in four years, it's just unbelievable. He says, intention is more important than almost anything, is the only thing that will continue to drag your butt toward the destination, regardless of the circumstances. Yep. So freaking true. So true. Bruce says, Steve, how old were you or what year did you leave stand up, if you don't mind me asking? My last, my last stand up routine was in Charlotte, North Carolina on New Year's Eve at the Comedy Zone Comedy Club. It was my last, my last stand-up thing. Um, what, when the, was it? The Millennium, 2000. Oh, wow. 22 years ago. Yeah, I thought, I always thought that was a sacred moment too, because it was the Millennium. It was, you know, wow, it was, to me, that for some reason that hit me. It was very special, and I didn't think it was a coincidence at all. I just wow. thought because I remember being on stage doing my act, and I'm doing my act, and I'm kicking ass. I always kick ass, but it was. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm thinking this is my last stand-up routine. You know, really? this is this is it. You it knew very emotional. It was very emotional. You and, knew that was it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow, that was it. Yeah, because because I started getting a lot of speaking gigs. My the, the those past few years, I was doing both, and then my speaking gigs started coming in, coming in, and I'm saying, hey, you know, this is it. This is this is I'm going for it, and you know, I, like I always say, it's it's the best thing I ever did. So that yeah. was in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Comedy Zone Comedy Club, Independence Boulevard, right. That's, That's right. where that he's the one that asked the question and, and he lives in Charlotte. That's crazy. Wow. Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's crazy. Um, so 
And you, how long did it take? 10 years later, you were in the Speaker's Hall of Fame? Uh, six years later. 2006, I was uh, inducted into the Speaker's Hall of Fame. And, and you know, you know, it's amazing with that, with that story, because, you know, it's thousands and thousands of people in the audience. But look, <laughs> so, I love that. And him being a comedian <laughs> on top of that. Brian, did you say you read the book? Was that the comment you said about my book? Did you read the book? No, he read he read Mark Victor Hansen's. Oh, book. Mark Victor Hansen's book. Not, That's a great hey, book. by the way, Brian, if you haven't read this, get a copy, dude. It's freaking amazing, amazing. It's so good. Brian's a huge, huge reader. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of the the the, the Speaker Hall of Fame thing, there, um, I remember getting up my, my 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 wife was there and my agent uh, jim kepler from the kepler kepler speakers and it was thousands of people and yeah it's a trip to be honored by your peers and everyone's giving you a standing ovation for this right but what was going through my mind as the guy was introducing me up frank Beccaro introduced me was the journey towards it the sacrifices I made, the fear I had to endure and how I stayed, can, I was so steadfast and sure with my intention to continue in spite of the fear. Because leaving something that you're really good at, and I was really good as a stand-up comedian, to do something- you're, Hold it. If just to get put it in perspective, your roommate was Drew, Drew Carey at the yes. time. Yes. And he thought you'd lost your freaking mind when you told him I'm not- he I'm said it was crazy. Him. He said, how could you How could you leave now? You're so close. And that's when it hit me. I said, how can I be so close to something I don't want anymore? That's so unbelievably cool, man. Yeah, people, yeah, I say know. It again. I know I say know. it again for the people in the back. What? Say yeah. it again. Well, he, he, he looked at me and said, how could you do it when you're so close? And this was an aha moment for me, too. I said, Drew, think about this. How could I be so close to something I do not want anymore? I don't want it. But the fear of leaving was overwhelming. Yeah, was overwhelming. So as I'm, as he's introducing me, and I'm looking at all these people standing up, it wasn't my ego that I was experiencing. It was my soul that I was experiencing. Because mm -hmm. my soul, as and everything was like going in slow motion as I'm walking up, and I'm thinking of the nights that I woke up and saying, are you absolutely out of your mind? How could you leave now? You dedicated 25 years of your life to stand up comedy. You were headlining comedy clubs and theaters, you know, and I'm going on and on. But there was an empowering feeling when I grabbed that that thing that they gave me, that trophy, whatever you want to call it, the award. And I gave my acceptance speech. It was a, it was released like I did it. I intended to do it and I did it. And that's what was going on through my mind. And, and, and it was, yeah. And, you know, another thing, I think I might've told you this, but I think that if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to tell you what happened that night that I prayed when I had that argument with Drew Carey. Yeah, go ahead, man. I know some people might've heard this, if you don't mind. Um, I prayed and I got on my knees and I, and I usually don't get on my knees when I pray, but I did then. And I said, you know, I said, I need your help here. I said, I'm getting into something that I know absolutely nothing about. And I'm leaving something I'm great at, but yet I know I'm supposed to be doing this. If I'm doing the right thing, send someone to me that can help me as soon as possible. And whenever you can, whenever you can. So that that next week I took off and I flew from LAX to uh, JFK airport. And I was sitting on a plane and I felt very emotional. I mean, really emotional. I'm saying, I'm going home. I don't believe this. This is crazy. What are you doing? And this guy is looking at me. He's a very distinguished guy with a three-piece suit, perfect white hair and beard. And he's looking at me and I'm saying, oh, crap, I hope this guy doesn't want to talk. And he goes, excuse me, but you, he goes, you, you know, I was just going to, you know, but he's, and he, and he goes, excuse me. And he, and I said, yeah. And he goes, I, you just look familiar. I'm sorry. And I had just done my Showtime special a couple of weeks before that. I said, maybe you saw me on TV. I had a Showtime special. He goes, oh, yeah, Steve uh, Russo. I said, Rizzo. And he goes, yeah. And we're talking and we're talking, we're talking. And uh, 30 minutes go by, about 30 minutes. And he looks at me, he goes, I'm really sorry. He goes, but uh, I just noticed 
is everything all right? You seem like something's off. You seem just a little. And I said, well, that's very perceptive of you. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in a challenging situation right now in my life. And I was like, revealing to him my problem. And he said, well, what is it? I said, I, I don't want to do stand up anymore. And I want to do something else. And there's something else that I want to do. I know nothing about. I said, and I'm going home to my home now in Long Island and I'm leaving my apartment in, 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 uh, in, in Hollywood. So I said, and as a matter of fact, I, I, before I took off, I prayed for, to show me someone, give me someone who can help me get into this business that I know nothing about. So he goes, Oh my God, what is it that you want to do? <laughs> I said, I want to be a hooker. No, I said, <laughs> what? <laughs> you're a hooker. I don't know. You're a hooker. I, I thought I was doing good. <laughs> Sorry. I went off track. That was Dudley, do Dudley, uh, Dudley Moore. Anyway. Oh my God. So, uh, he goes, Oh my God. So what is this thing that you want to do? And I said, I guess I want to be what you would call a motivational speaker. And he starts laughing. I mean, he's oh, knee slapping there and he's hitting me on the shoulder. And <laughs> and I'm thinking he's laughing at me because I'm an asshole because I'm leaving a successful career as a comedian. And I said, what are you laughing at? He goes, he goes, I am the answer to your prayers. He goes, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Al and I am the president of the New York chapter of the National Speakers Association. <laughs> and he took me by the wing. Oh my God! That's me right by the hand. I went. I went to the workshop that next weekend in in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Omni Hotel, at the Omni Hotel, and he introduced me to all the powers that be. But the cool thing, Ken, Ken, is that everyone there, not everyone, most of the higher end people knew me. They saw me at their theater or comedy club, or they saw me on my Showtime special. So yeah. I was already a celebrity without paying any dues. So when I got home after the three day workshop, I get a phone call from the, someone from the board, Vanna, and she <laughs> left a message on my service and said, Steve, it was such a pleasure meeting you. And we'd like to know if you'd like to come to the convention where there would be thousands of people. And we would like you to give a special uh, invitation only presentation to 200 of the country's top speakers on how to add humor in their presentation. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I had six months to do it and I did it. And that was it. Oh my God. That's unbelievable. Brian says, that's the best story I've heard in a minute. God <laughs> is so good, man. <laughs> you know, that's what this, this, this show is about because Steve, you've, you, you know, you, you were friends with Rodney Dangerfield. You've worked with Eddie Murphy and Jerry Seinfeld and Drew Carey and all the, all, all Polly Shore. Did you say you worked with Polly Shore? I, I knew, I knew, I knew Polly. Uh, he was there because at the, com at the comedy store, his mom owned that, you know, Mitzi Shore owned it. So okay. Polly was there and he was, he was a pretty big star back then too. So. So, right. so you, you've done all of these things and, and, you know, um, you're just a regular guy from Compton. I'm kidding. From, from <laughs> where, where I, I don't even remember Bronx, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. <laughs> if I was there, I'd smack you right in the back of the head. Why? <laughs> you give me like regular guy from Compton. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you're just a, 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 the the point is this. I know, I know. The point is, you're just um, <laughs> get the hook. Uh, look, <laughs> maybe maybe I'm late. To All the right, here, you've got to get the book, man. Uh, you'll understand who Bob is. The book is called Conversations with Bob. That's why we decided to do the show, and it is the. Steve, tell him who tell him how Bob came about, please. I, I, just, I just he'll still he's gonna get he probably already ordered the book by now. Okay, but but just okay, I, I'll, I'll tell, tell the story. Okay. Tell the story. Oh gee. Steve, his standard answer is you're gonna have to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, but Brian, you're gonna have to buy the book. No, uh, <laughs> he, already, he already got he already got me. Tell tell him uh, years ago. It Brian, by the way, it took me uh 
seven years to write the book. Um, and um, I, I'm going to be very, very brief. Uh, in the middle of a divorce, it was my my decision to get divorced after 32 years of marriage. And uh, it was very, very difficult for me. It was devastating. And um, <clears throat> I guess in a in a world of panic, I woke up one morning and I told my wife, I said, I just, this is way after I told her we were getting divorced. I said, I'm moving to California. And I didn't even know why I said that, but I knew that's where I needed to go. And she was asking me to seek help and, and you know, go to therapy and all that stuff. And I, about a week, two weeks later, I, I packed and I, I took off and I rented an apartment in Marina Del Rey, California. And I knew right then and there I was going to have to face my demons. My negative labels, my toxic labels from my past were right. coming back to haunt me with a vengeance. So I spent two years there. But it was one morning after a uh, a workout, I would work out. I, I work out every day and there was a 24-hour gym near Venice Beach. And I would work out there. And after the workout, I would walk on Venice Beach by myself, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, which is not a safe thing to do. And uh, one morning I lost it. I mean, heart-wrenching lost control of my emotions, tears, and I was cursing at God. And I took a step and I said, uh, what the hell is wrong with me? And what the hell am I doing here? And then I took another step and I heard something within me say, you know why you're here and you know what's wrong. You're just too caught up in your own drama to find the answer. And I went, where the hell is this coming from? And I got in my car and drove to my apartment in Marina Del Rey. I took out my laptop. And I typed in another question and then another answer came and then another question, then another answer. And I was there for hours and I realized, oh, my God, I'm talking. I'm talking to God. I'm having a conversation with God and he's answering all of my questions. I was exhausted from that. I woke up the next morning and I looked at what I wrote. and I don't remember writing it, which happens a lot of times when I write. And uh, I kept asking more questions and more answers came. But um uh, I realized at that point I was writing a book and then my imagination kicked in. Then my sense of humor kicked in. So it's called Conversations with Bob and it's about two characters, your inner Bob and your inner Bernie. And uh, Bernie resides in the negative zone. And Bernie really was me, be it just a little exaggerated, but he was me. Bernie represents every person on this planet who feels that their life isn't working on some level or another and 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 is trapped in his own negative inertia and and which represents almost everyone on the planet so i wrote it in bob is god and um every time i thought i was finished uh bob said no you're not and it took me seven years to write and now it's out and it's getting wonderful reviews do you I hope think that answers that, your question do you think that for for the um uber religious people that may watch this that have you know been programmed to believe that god is god and that's it we don't call god anything but god how could you do that that's blasphemous do you think that um and you need to get on brian you need to have steve on your podcast bro steve you need to be on brian's show don't tell me what to do. Hey, hey, tough guy. <laughs> hey, um, but like, <laughs> don't. Well, I'm your agent. I'm supposed. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I know you. You're asking me a question. Do religious group? Do you yeah, think? Yeah. So for the know. people that say, like, I, I want you to kind of it, because in the book you actually tell the story about how the word Bob came about. And yes. I think it's freaking beautiful. I think it's awesome. And and I, I want I want you to share that. Please. Pretty well, please. How he gets the name Bob? Yeah. Um, well, Bernie uh, is in a hotel. And um, it re you know, you're right. This doesn't matter if I tell people. No, they're they're going to read it anyway. Bernie is it. in a hotel and he's very pissed off at life. And he blames everybody but himself. And he's in his mid fifties and he's complaining about his job and how he never gets the money, the respect and all this stuff. And he starts cursing at an infomercial that comes on the TV in his room. And the, the TV guy is telling him that you can create your own miracles and you can do this. And Bernie 
<clears throat> throws a remote at the TV and he goes to get some sleep and he feels a sharp pain in his heart and he's having a heart attack. He thinks he's dying. Seeing changes. He's going into a hospital. His body rises. He looks down at himself. They put the cover over his head and he thinks he's dead and he winds up in this place that he thinks is heaven and he meets this character and um, the character uh, uh, he says, I want to speak to the um, the character he meets is the gatekeeper. And he goes, uh, can I help you? And he says, yes. He goes, I want to speak to the big kahuna. He goes, who? The big kahuna, you know, the light, the force, the almighty. I want to speak to the guy in charge. He goes, well, uh, up here, we call the big kahuna the big guy. He goes, well, if it doesn't matter what you call him, then I'll just call him Bob then. Boom. So does he doesn't realize that the gatekeeper is God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's so uh, good, man. It's yeah, so, so anyway, good. and Bob, when he when he realizes that it's God, he goes, "Oh my God, I'm I'm so sorry." He goes, "No, no, please call me Bob. I like it. It's it's very friendly. People can people should talk to me as if I'm a friend because I am, and it's you know blah blah blah. So it's wonderful relationship starts taking place. It's and, amazing. Uh, it, it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. This book, by the way just so everybody watching knows when I read the book, finally, because <laughs> I, I had, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Took you so much to read it. I, I, by the way, Steve and I were at Craig's Craig does waltz event in Dallas together. And we're at the VIP party after the, the whole deal. And, and, and he's doing all different impressions, doing Rodney Dangerfield, which you do better than Rodney did. Like you, you, you're so good, and and um, and 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 he's doing all. And it's just you and I. And I'm like, what about Seinfeld? Can you do Seinfeld? And he's like, just what? boom, he starts doing Seinfeld. I, I yelled at you like Seinfeld. What do you mean? Can I do Seinfeld? I don't know what's wrong with you. You keep putting all this pressure on me. You're never satisfied. And, and I realized, holy shit, I can do Seinfeld. And you're like, it's the first time I've ever <laughs> done it. It's the first time like, I ever did him. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Anyway, so um, at the end of this book, I will not tell that part of the no, story. No, don't, please. But I won't. But at the end of the book, Wow is all I can say. And I literally teared up and I don't tear up reading books ever. And I literally teared up. It was, it's so powerful. You won't even believe it. Like it's like, <clears throat> it's a life changing book. I'm telling you. So get the book. If you haven't gotten it yet, get the book and read it. Cause it's powerful. So what powerful. Oh. Huh? <laughs> what book is that? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Maybe conversations with Ken. Hey, Brian, I hope we answered your question. Yeah. And he also said he would love to have you on the show. Sure. How yeah. much? <laughs> How much do you have to pay him to be on the show? No, I think it's free. I don't think he'll charge you. I think I meant it the other way around. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, there is so no problem outside of you that is superior to the power. Of I like that. That's pretty well, cool. We'll have the book by Tuesday. FYI, it's ten percent off on Amazon currently. Would you look at that? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, very cool. So, all right, listen, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. It's been an hour and four minutes almost. So, yeah. um, it went by fast, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. The, the, you know, the power of intention and the power of, um, <laughs> oh my God. What? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Brian, I'll do your show. Um, so later on tonight, if a guy named Vinny knocks on your door, <laughs> says he just wants to have a small conversation with Brian, all right? Oh, by the way, the guy's not going to be Bob. It's not going to be Bob. 
That's funny, Brian. That's really funny. That's really funny. God, I hate when people are funnier than me. It pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He said, just a sign that we will have a blast. Brian is like a brother to me. You'll love Brian. He's freaking awesome. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Nick said, wow, LOL. So, so tonight we were talking about the power of intention and the power of decision, deciding. Like Brian could have made a better decision than putting that comment out. He has no idea who he's talking to. I'll hit him so hard his family will die. I'll oh my God. So many rights he'll be begging me for a left. I'll kick him so far up his ass and breath will smell like shoe polish. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Vinny will be willing to introduce me. <laughs> This guy's oh my funny. God. That is Tom oh. Ginn said, Who needs who needs Netflix? This is hilarious. So, so you know, make I I honestly I think that this this is one of the most important episodes that we've we've done so far out of the three <laughs> three that we've done so far. Um, but you know, I think you know, when when you when you go about your life and you are you know, people want to get to the next level. I, I did a, I, about an hour before our show, I did a live stream. I don't know if you saw it, but I did a live stream. Um, and I was talking about getting around people, the right people, getting around people on that are already at a higher level than you are. Mm -hmm. I was talking about the, the, the thing that Craig and I are doing, the, the retreat and the mastermind and, 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 you know, being around people on a super high level, like Dr. John Gray and Glenn Morshower, you met Glenn, like, holy crap, that guy is on a whole different level. And, and, you know, being around people on a higher level, it's what brought you to where you got to in your life. You would have never had a Showtime special if you weren't around the right people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for you people that haven't signed up for that retreat, um, uh, I, I, I really think you should, because I know the people that are going to be presenting there. And um, it's it's definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. I mean, it's what you're going to be learning it, in many different ways is the power of intention. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be right. You're going to be learning all different all different strategies and tools to get you to where you want to go. Even if you're somewhere now that you really love, there are a lot of people like when we did the Dallas thing, there were incredibly, everybody there was successful, but these yep. people wanted to expand their horizons. Some of them wanted to be authors. Some of them wanted to get into the speaking business, yeah. you know, cool. <clears throat> but this, this, this kicks it up a couple of more notches. So, yeah, I, I, and I, we haven't even told anybody this yet, but we're, we're actually, we decided the other day on our very first mastermind zoom meeting, I threw out the idea and Craig agreed. So we're doing a book and everybody that's a member of this mastermind gets a chapter in the book and it will be a number one bestseller. I I've never had a book that wasn't a number one bestseller and neither has Craig and Craig's written, I think 15 books. So um, everybody in the mastermind gets to be a part of that book as well. So it's just, we're taking this to a whole different level, man. And, and, Getting around the right people is the number one most important thing. And, and, and I think that when you set an intention of, I want to get to, you know, I, I, like I had a conversation with my buddy Ramey yesterday and who's a billionaire and he's like, man, he, you've, you've hung out with him on, on, on the yes. Girl live Academy. Yes. And you're like, dude, that guy is on a different level. Like he's like, He's he's like talking about like should I buy a thousand Teslas for my company or should I go buy twenty five hundred Teslas it, it, like at once <laughs> like not stretched out over time but at once you know it's it's setting an intention to be greater to be bigger to get to the next level you can't help anybody if you're broke in this life would you agree with that or not uh, I think I have to I don't. I don't think it's all about money. I, I think. I don't think so either. I, 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 so yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying. 
Oh, yeah. I, I, I thought you were just talking about the money aspect. No, 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 no. I'm talking yeah. about helping, uh, like helping the masses. How do you help the masses if, yes. you're, if you're broke? Yeah. 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 How? Yeah. Well, you can. I mean, Jesus was broken. He helped the masses. He wasn't broke. Well, Jesus had the ability to turn water into wine. Oh, you're saying broke. Okay. So who was spiritually? I get what you're saying now. No, I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. No, you can't. If you're broke mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even monetarily, it's going to be tough. But spiritually, uh, uh, definitely. If you're broken, if you're broken down, if you let life beat the crap out of you and you didn't get up, um, if you give up too easily, that it you. If you how about how it, about how about this, Steve? Because I see, I see, I feel. The energy, right? Everything's energy. Go feed the homeless with no money. Right. You can't do it. Right. Unless you're going to go rob a bank or a restaurant. If uh, you have strong negotiating skills, you can go to somebody else with a bunch of money. Exactly. Right. And use other people's right. money. But at the end of the day, to really make a difference in people's lives, like starving people and feeding them, you have to. To be able to have access to yes, cash. Yes, that's great. That's well said. If you have an idea and you have intention to want to mass manifest that idea, you could look at Colonel Sanders, who had no yep. money, and it took him over a thousand tries to sell his chicken recipe. Yep. And he kept trying, and he kept trying, and he kept trying. What if he would have quit on 998? He never would have known. Yep. So yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. But he he refused to be defeated. And he had a strong belief in a higher power too. Robert says Jesus was a carpenter and I've been wondering when we were going to see some special edition furniture. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what? That's funny. Oh lord. So anyway, so set hey, set intentions and make decisions to 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 do better in life. I mean, you can make a decision on how you're going to react to things, everything, like everything is a decision away from making, making. I, I agree. I, I think it starts as soon as you wake up in the morning. I, I know we got to go here, but it, you, you, you got to wake up in the morning. And we said this the last show with an attitude of gratitude, focus on what's working and just say to yourself, today's going to be a great day. I may be confronted with unexpected challenges today, but I know there's something within me that can meet that challenge head on. I know this and I'm ready for it. And if it happens, I'll deal with it if it happens. And if I, and when it does happen and I beat it and I'm, I'm able to embrace it and deal with it, I will become empowered as a result. Amen. Amen. This has been a great episode of conversations with Bob. I'm going to connect you and, and Brian Hess. Brian is an amazing dude. You will love him. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I already know I'm going to. So he's, he's he said, my, my intention is to head to bed and double lock the door in case this Vinny character <laughs> actually. <laughs> you're going to hear, you're going to hear, hey, uh, Brian, I know you're there. Door locks don't bother me at all. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, listen, man, thank you, everybody who watched. For everybody who shared this out, thank you. Genuinely appreciate you all. Lana says, Jesus said, yes, he fed 5,000 without a dime. Jesus had some pretty special powers. I think we could all agree to that. Um, I well, don't know. the American know. Express black card, too. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yes. Anyway, everybody have a great week. Go ahead, Steve. What do you got to say? If you haven't purchased the book, this isn't really a sales pitch. I want you all to be a part of the mission. If you if you read it and you like it, tell other people about it. And uh, I would appreciate it because um, I believe this book has the power to be a spark that could ignite change in people's lives. So because it wasn't written for me, Bob wrote it. That's, there you go. That's all I have to go say. get the book. Go to Amazon and get it. it's ten percent off right now on Amazon. So, according cheap. to Brian, so what? Cheap, What'd you say? Cheap bastards. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that was not Bob saying that, by the no, way. No, it wasn't Bob. Bob just smacked me in the back of the head. <laughs>
you, you just lost 10 sales, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> what salesperson calls the people he's trying to sell? He <laughs> <Pete> bastards. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Brian said I saved two bucks. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. All right. Hey, you guys have a great night. Have an unbelievable week. And remember, you're the one that's in control of the kind of week you have. You are in control. So make the right choice. Make the right choice and what mindset you're going to have. Steve Rizzo, any last words? No, nope. love you all. Thank you for joining in. And um, it's a blast doing this. And I will see you next week. We'll we see you see guys. You. Stay with me, Steve. Don't hang up now. I'm going to end the show now. <laughs> see you guys. God, you're so...